Well, greetings, everybody. I apologize for the deluge of videos, relatively speaking. Um, I kind of feel like my channel suffers from a feast or famine type of thing, where where I work now, I can't really upload videos. Um, and then when I get home, I mean, I have maybe four or five other ones I'd like to do. I don't know if I'll get time to, but um, this one's going to be a little bit different and a little bit shorter. Um, I my, my channel has never been an investing channel. I'm not a market watcher. I don't um, pay close enough attention to you know the prices of commodities, the prices of precious metals or Bitcoin. Um, I don't watch the stock market. I uh, you know very much don't pay really close attention to it. And when I do watch channels that are geared to that, and there's there's been over the years a huge number of you know libertarian oriented, Austrian economics, hard metal investing channels um, you know whenever I've listened to them it's hard for me to assess you know how much they know because I don't I don't know enough to to kind of question them and on, on, on the other hand um, you know they seem like smart guys and and you know that's why I end up subscribing to them but I was noticing um, the, the I, I did notice the price of, of silver, especially coming down, gold less so, but still down. I noticed it mostly because periodically I go and buy. Typically, when I go to work, when I come back, I will make several purchases, or whenever I get paid, which the the schedule of when I get paid doesn't line up exactly with when I worked. Um, there's about a one month delay, and I don't I don't have a ticker keeping track, so I'll just get a message saying that I got paid, and uh, you know, go and make a purchase. But um, you know, as as of indicated before in the past and this is still the case you know I'm interested in diversifying I figure my 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 safe pile of precious metals of physical of physical metal is, is you know it's it's not enough to like retire on necessarily but it's a nice it's a nice enough to pay for my living expenses for a couple of years or uh, as a major down payment or if I have an emergency like uh, you know I I've got something there um, but you know, I was I've been interested in diversifying and, and you know getting into other areas of of actual investment. I think buying precious metals is is usually not really an investment. There, of course, you could change, you could sell at a at a gain, and and perhaps then maybe. But typically, it's not. It's a hedge against inflation. It's a way to save money. Um, it's a little bit harder to make it earn you money. You have to kind of resell it at the right prices. So. You know, as I as I usually do when I want to learn something that I don't know that much about, I'll buy books on it. So it's been a while now. I think it's been over a year, but I, you know, I just went online and I type what are the best books for investing. You come up with a top ten list. You buy it. You buy some other ones that catch your ear. So I've got several Jim Rogers' books. I have several Peter Schiff's books. Um, you know, just a lot of stuff, and I haven't read them all. I'm kind of gradually going through them. And uh, I actually think I did a video where I actually asked for suggestions and people said, here, try this, try this. And, and you know, if, I may not have read the book yet, but I've certainly bought it. But uh, going through the ones that I had, you know, I kind of prioritized. And one of them that I read, or that I'm still reading, is half done, is a classic. It's called The Intelligent Investor uh, by Benjamin Graham. And this book here, sort here been in print quite a quite a long time this is the it's a revised edition but it's, there have been many many editions of this book yeah originally published in 1949 and kind of the the claim to fame of this book which I'm not gonna say is um, you know like a Bible or that can that can uh, a magic key that can make anyone wealthy uh, or that my having read it makes me some you know extremely wise investor since millions of people have read this book but it's kind of famous that Warren Buffett highly recommends it. He said he read it as a 19-year-old and that it, he's kind of been guided by it, at least to a point. Um, and that's, of course, what he says and not necessarily the truth. But it's a pretty ringing endorsement. So reading through the book, I, I, was, I, was, I was struck by you know, how simple some of the messages are. And basically the idea is that you, you buy things when they're cheap and you sell them when they're expensive. Um, even a valuable stock, even a good stock, you're not going to make money on it if you pay too high a price, right? And even even a stock that's not particularly good, if you get it cheap enough, it could be worth buying. Um, and reading through the book, 
um, which I believe I was, I kind of put it down for a while, but I was reading it in September. Um, you know, it became obvious that like the metals have come so far down that now it seems like relative to the last decade, basically a good time to buy, you know? So even though I've been in a position to want to want to diversify and kind of, I'm not tired of it. I love buying gold and silver. It's, I, I, I enjoy doing it. I enjoy having it, but you know, in my own interest, I'm, you know, seeing what the limitations of that are and wanting to do more, but the price has come down to a point where it's very hard not to put, I'm not putting all my money in it by any means, but getting more. Uh, and this is kind of, if you haven't been paying attention, if you're one of those guys, and there's a lot of people out there, because I was in the same boat for a long time, that you hear about, oh, buy this kind of stock, and buy this, or buy gold, buy silver, and you look at um, how expensive it is, and you realize, I, I really can't, or you can't do very much. And you know, when I, when I started, I started buying stuff like this. This is a, this is actually a half ounce coin, so I would buy one ounce coins. I don't have any one ounce coins with me right now, you know. And this is something at today's prices. You're, this is probably something like eight dollars. All right, so to get a coin like this, you don't have to have a huge investment fund. You don't have to have a huge income. And I did the whole. I worked at. I mean, I was doing it in college, and I would. I would work my jobs at, at fast food or whatever, and my bi-weekly check, if I was able to pay all of my bills, which was not always easy to do, I would you know, uh, go and maybe buy one or two, usually one ounce coins, but I'll use, the, if I hadn't told you this was a half ounce, you might not realize it, but, you know, maybe one or two of these, and some weeks I wasn't able to do it, and some weeks I might be able to buy two or three, or maybe one or two more, and, uh, you know, that's not a lot. But every every coin adds up at the end, and that you know I have some of those savings still, which is I think a ringing endorsement of of its value in terms of saving. Because if I had kept that money in cash, I guarantee you, I wouldn't still have it. I would have converted it into a pizza, or a movie ticket, or you know, um, some you know, vanilla coke or something, um, years and years and years ago. And the fact that I still have it, I think, is kind of a testament. It, the liquidity is good. If you need money, you can sell it and get it back. And I've had to do that once or twice. Um, not really only once, but, uh, you know, years and years of buying these things. And once the price came up in the last couple of years, even with my increased income, that's still what I, you know, and I have some of these that I probably paid over $30 for. I think some of them, I think not that many, but some, and I have some that I paid $8 for. I think the first, the first stuff I bought, I was paying about $8 for. Um, and at that price range, even with what I make now, I would not typically buy anything more than a 10 ounce bar. I've made some, I have made larger purchases. Um, as soon as it got to around 20 though, I started making much bigger purchases. And this fall, instead of buying coins, I've transitioned to this type of thing. This is a 100 ounce bar from the Royal Canadian Mint. Minted this year, apparently. This is uh, pure, <laughs> and uh, I love these things. Okay, so I have a lot of these now. Uh, six months ago, I didn't have any, and now I have quite a few. Um, and this one I didn't actually buy. This one I exchanged. I took a whole bunch of my coins in and exchanged them for this, just because these are easier to keep track of, they're easier to uh, count, uh, and they're easier to store. Uh, and I had a whole bunch of coins like this one that, you know, they're, I, I, I'm going to keep a lot of coins, don't get me wrong. I don't want to ever liquidate all my coins, but, um, you know, as a, as a form of savings, as a passive store of wealth, this is better than a hundred of these or 200 of these. Um, and the thing is with this, with a bar like this though, if, if silver was $40 an ounce, I would not be buying this. Still, I might buy a 10 ounce, but I would not be buying this. Um, and it's so reflective. It's beautiful. Um, so what, I, what I'm saying is, like, if, if you've been kind of on the fence, I wouldn't suggest, um, you know, 
putting your last dime in it or or taking out a more new mortgage or anything but you know if, if buying precious metals is something that's been priced out of your category for a long time you know now isn't a bad time to maybe pick up some and, but what's so funny you know I went to my dealer uh, you know he said well we're really busy right now and I said why, why is that because a lot of people are bringing in their silver and they're selling it um, that is the complete opposite of what you should do now I understand like there might be in a in a, in a certain situations you have to sell like if you if you need money right now if you get a medical emergency or you can't pay your rent or whatever and even though you're taking a, a loss you, you got to liquidate okay that's that's different I can understand that but if if you if that's not our issue and you're just like worried about the future of, of the future price it makes no sense to take a huge hit like that and and Graham says the same thing it's very it's very odd you know as the prices of stocks go up that's when people buy them and then when they go down then people try and sell them and that's I mean not to say that's never justified or you could never turn out okay having done that but that's in general that's not kind of a good way to do it um, and if you bought uh, if you bought one of these at thirty dollars an ounce you know so three thousand dollars to sell it now is insane you know unless you need the money which again that's different um, and you know I've been I've been very liberally buying more and more of these just because well I can and because they're 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 a lot cheaper you know and than they were just a year or two or three years ago um, I think I've been told I don't really watch the silver analysts anymore that a lot of them have kind of been lamenting like how low the prices are and if 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 the, the the drop in the price is meaning you can't have dinner or you can't pay your rent then you know I understand and you shouldn't be um, if, if your margin of survival is that narrow that you know uh, a change a fluctuation in the price is going to make the difference between whether you can have a full belly or not tonight then you shouldn't be buying anything right you should be reducing your cost of living and trying to increase your income however possible either through a different job or some kind of entrepreneurial activity um, I think I think people kind of make it hard for themselves because a lot of times they assume they have to increase their income that's not really true if you can decrease your expenditures which you know everyone has different circumstances if you have some kind of you know uh, you need medication that costs a lot or, or something like that it's not always possible you know I like, if you look at me like the room that I'm in here it's like I don't know 10 by 12 it's not very big um, you know and I could I could spend a lot more I mean uh, I could spend thousands of dollars a month uh, and rent like a nice house. Uh, it would be in my budget. I could do it, but why? I'd rather have a whole bunch of these instead, right? Um, maybe someday I'll get to the house, but it. Not to say there's anything objectively wrong, you know, with putting more money into your habitation because there's not. But if your goal is to try and save for the future and to invest, and if I'm not talking about gold and silver, you know, the more money you have. To actually invest would you know this would still apply um you know keep your keep your keep your cost of living as low as possible um you know and it's amazing the things people think they have to have um i'm kind of accustomed to um you know living with a lot less uh i don't know i don't know why that is uh, maybe it's because i was in boy scouts maybe I, I don't know why it is you know like I, d I don't need a lot to be comfortable i think i'm i'm able to um keep myself interested in, in in life and stuff just by having books and i've got books by the way this is not mein kampf okay this is the rise and fall of the third reich by william Scher. i keep getting comments like he's got a nazi book yes there's a swastika on it it's not mein kampf i do have a copy of mein kampf it's not here i read it when i was in high school i just People keep seeing that yes, there's a swastika there. You can't see it, but there's another book on top that has a swastika on also, but whatever. Um total total aside. Uh so yeah, if if you know you're one of those people who has kind of been sitting on the sidelines, um I wouldn't I wouldn't jeopardize your you know lunch tomorrow, but uh, it might be a good time. This might be a good opportunity to walk down to the coin shop, the bullion shop, and just say, hey, you got any? 
and uh, you know get what you can. You don't have to. You don't have to start with this. I have more coins than I have of this still. Um, and you know, look at it. eight dollars. Is that so much? Is that such a you know thing? And you'll buy. You can buy two or three. And you know, a good way to look at something like this is like this is enough to meet your dietary requirements for you know a couple days or a week. A one ounce one could feed one person for a week easily. Um, yeah, if you don't eat filet mignon every day, um, and uh, gold, gold's still expensive, um, but you know you don't have to buy a whole ounce of that either. Um, these, uh, these are these are nice though. I got. I'm not gonna lie. I think these are sexy. Mmm. 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 -mm. They're heavy. These have real like heft to them. I'm gonna start working out with these actually. I, didn't, I only have one in my room right now, but, um, yeah, so, uh, I think, I don't know, I don't know where the despair comes from, uh, you know, prices are going to fluctuate, and, um, you know, there may come a time where they, we invent replicators or start mining asteroids when the price of precious metals really does kind of per per perpetually go extremely low and, and whatever, but then the kind of the upside of that is, like, we'll all be having, like, silver silver and everything and you know if we have replicators we'll all have like basically almost approaching free food and everything so i guess it's a fair trade off to say oh i don't have my my life savings investment didn't pan out but now we have like you know nearly cheap food or whatever and, um so and that that's i think that's well down the line still uh who knows uh, you know the future can't be predicted um but yeah uh you know, this isn't going to be an investment channel ever. I just thought it was interesting that um, you know Graham is saying, and he he mentioned I've read so far, he, you know, he's mentioned precious metals, and he says, uh, kind of, there's sort of maybe a place, but pretty limited. Um, but you know, the prices have come down quite a bit, and that's a good chance to buy relative to what we've had in the past. You know, and and if you did buy it more expensive, it's not a good time to sell. It's a good time to wait until it goes higher and you can get more of your money back or all of your money back or, you know, whatever else. I think um, right now the dollar seems to be doing pretty good. The price, is a gap. the price of oil is coming down. The price of gold and silver is coming down. I don't know about food, though. So um, we're going to have another event sooner or later. I don't know when. I don't know how severe. Uh, when that happens, I think, you know, a lot of the people who went and sold all their bars and all their coins are going to kick themselves, but, you know, we'll see. Um, anyway, that's pretty much it. This is going to be a short video. Um, I'm actually thinking about doing some very short videos, um, just very succinct coverage of, of topics, uh, just because a lot of people recommended over the years that I try that, um, and uh, whatever, it'd be something different. So I might do one of those in the next uh, couple days or two. So anyway, that's it.